welcome. We are here at the Super Day event uh, in Amsterdam, organized by Sir Sarah, and we talk here with Jan Veldink, who's from the uh, uh, UMC in Utrecht, and who just presented a, a keynote presentation about uh, the ALS uh, disease. Welcome. Thank okay. you. Can you tell a little bit about yourself? Of course, so I'm Jan Veldink, I'm a neurologist uh, from the uh, UMC Utrecht, and also a uh, professor in neurogenetics. And I'm um, coordinating Project MIND, which is a large genome sequencing project in, in ALS. ALS is a lethal disease. Uh, people might know it as Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, it's typically occurring in people over 60 years of age, but it can occur in younger people as well. It's lethal within three to five years. And there's no cure, so we desperately need more insight in its causes and hopefully thereby in new treatments. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that you have to collect uh, a, a large number of data, is that where you start? Yes, yeah, so essentially what, what you need is, is large cohorts of patients, but also matched controls, which is probably even harder to collect. Um, and yes, we really want to have them whole genome sequenced, all of them. Um, so that's about 90 gigabytes of data per sample. So if you, if you want to collect tens of thousands of, of subjects, you need large storage data and compute power. Mm -hmm. And uh, where, do you, where, where do you store all, the, all that, uh, those data? Yeah, so um, the data, uh, so the samples are being sent to a company in the US, Illumina, and there they are being whole genome sequenced, uh, mm -hmm. around 600 per month, so that's a large tur of a high turnaround time. And then, um, and then the data comes back over the wire uh, through SurfSara, uh, so the data is stored at SurfSara. Uh, which also allows to uh, provide a local backup to all the people that collaborate in the project. Um, and the the Sahara copy is a working copy of the data, and uh, so it allows to, to do all these calculations at Sahara on the combined data set. Uh, but the PIs in the consortium, so the investigators in the consortium, um, they decide whether or not to share the data, so they, they are owner of their own part of the data. And if they allow it, then you can open up their part of the data, and so we can uh, do the huge uh, joint analysis. So it's a collaboration between a number of institutes? Yes, so as of this moment there are six institutes involved and we really want to uh, ramp this up to maybe uh, 10 or 15 institutes in the coming months. Um, that's really necessary because it's, it's not so common disease, ALS, so we need, really need our international collaborators to get to these numbers of, of 15,000 uh, patients at least. We want to have whole genome sequence. Mm -hmm. um, if you, uh, so in the analysis, uh, you store uh, the working copy of the data at SARA, and where do you do the computing, and what type of computing do you do? Yeah, so uh, as of this moment, so the data is split in two parts, so it's, we have the raw data, um, and we have more the annotated data, um, and we, uh, as of now, we, we mainly do the calculations on the annotated data. Uh, you could also do it locally, so the PIs in the, in, in the project have local copies of, of this annotated data and, and so most analyses now do occur locally on HPC solutions in the US and also here in, in, in the Netherlands at the UMC Utrecht. Um, but if we want to do, you use the raw data where we have some other challenges we can, you know, we can solve for this disease, uh, then we really, really need Surf Um But those analyses really still need to be uh, run and, and conducted. Uh, but that's kind of the setup that for these raw data analyses we really need SurfSara and those are impossible to do locally mm -hmm. um, uh, within the consortium. And the, um, you're then using the clusters at SurfSara or the supercomputer? Or yeah, so for, for the annotated data, that, so that's, that's the VCF files, we use LISA uh, mainly at, and what we do is we, we look for an increased burden of mutations in genes, so we kind of summarize all mutations, all variations in a gene and compare those to the healthy controls and if something comes out then we try to replicate it um, and that's on LISA. And on GRID we, we use the, the raw read information and there we can do all kinds of other interesting things, for example looking for uh, strange duplications or repeated elements in the genome that, that are not present in those GVCF files, but that's really requiring going through all the read information, and so that's, that's um, you know, powers of magnitude larger than in terms of compute power uh, than the VCF files. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, once you, you did the calculation, do you also need something like visualization or is that 
not really needed. Well, it's less of an yeah. urgent, uh, urgency. Um, in the end, you, uh, for example, you can calculate like like a mean uh, genetic uh, number for every subject. You can plot them in, in 2D space and see whether or not it's a homogeneous sample or they're outliers, for example, those kinds of visualization. Those are quite standard in genetics. Um, but other than that, it's not really necessary to have some advanced uh, visualizations or something. Okay. Um, in, in, in the end, um, of course, the intention is on, on the longer run to help people, to help patients and yes. the thing. Um, people are still talking a lot about personalized medicine, but you say, well, actually, there's a new term, precision medicine, which yes. is better. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah. So. so Precision medicine really is all about pinpointing the exact cause of an individual's uh, disease. So we know that ALS is, is a collection of diseases, it's not one disease. So every small group of patients will have their own mutation or, or variants that is responsible for the disease. And nowadays in, in molecular biology it's possible to correct those or to silence those or to, to really target those precise uh, aberrations in, in one patient or one subgroup of patients. And we really think that that's, that's going to be of way more benefit than just shooting with this generic drug that will maybe mm -hmm. slow a bit, but, but we really hope that this precision approach is, uh, will either arrest the disease you know, in on the longer term or, uh, or even, even better, but that's, that's, that remains to be seen. So, so actually you're looking at the gene that does something incorrect and then you yes. just correct that gene or yes. try to silence that specific yes, gene. Yes, that exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, that, that's, and, there are, and there are many challenges still ahead. You know, how specific is it really? How efficient is it? Is it safe? Um, if you silence a gene, will that maybe cause some harm, you know, because you need the protein or whatever? Um, so so we're, we're quite not there, that, uh, there yet. So that's, that's, that's really uh, many challenges still. But, uh, but at least it's, it's really an anchor for, for uh, future developments. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, are you also working together, or, or your project is that working together with, with, with say, patient organizations? Or yes, we really do uh, collaborate with uh, many foundations over uh, over the entire globe. Uh, many patients' foundations collect money, of course, uh, through donations and all sorts of um, campaigns. And so we really try to bring uh, investigators and, and foundations together and to help them convince that this is a relevant project. Uh, so we can raise the funds to, to really complete it successfully in uh, due course. Yeah. But thank you very much for this uh, interview and success with your uh, research. Okay, thank you. For Prima Magazine, this was Ad Emin reporting.